Hi everyone! I think online uh, there is a list of certain videos uh, a streamer must do. And one of such videos uh, should be dedicated to the Stafford Gambit. So here we go! This summer my daughter and I recorded quite a lot of TikToks. And one of the TikTok videos uh, was dedicated to the Stafford Gambit. Let's have a look at this video. You see myself and my daughter playing chess. I opened the game with e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, replies my daughter. And after knight takes e5, suddenly she plays this famous, well, at least online it's very famous, uh, Stafford Gambit. I accept it. I protect the pawn by playing d3. But after bishop c5, I make a mistake. And thus my daughter takes on e4, sacrifices the queen, and, well, checkmates me. Checkmates me. Yes, that happens. And after publishing this video, and after realizing that the Stafford Gambit is the, the thing to do, <laughs> I decided to record like a longer YouTube video with my personal story on the Stafford campus. As I now know, Eric Rosen recorded dozens of videos with his uh, brilliant uh, victories on the Stafford Gambit, and uh, I believe uh, that somehow influenced people to follow his steps and to uh, play uh, this opening. Of course, we want to win fast, and who doesn't like traps? And my personal story with the Stafford Gambit started with my online Blitz game with Eric in uh, 2000, 2019. Back in 2019, he played this move order against myself in the Blitz game on chess.com. Well, of course, I was surprised. Uh, we have the main tabia of the Petrov defense with the third knight takes e5 and usually black plays d6 and well knight f3 knight takes e4 and etc 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 but in the game eric played knight c6 to my astonishment and surprise i captured the knight d takes e6 i did know nothing about this gambit, but of course I wanted to protect my central pawn. And I played knight to c3, which is a very good and logical move. There are different uh, traps that, again, you can watch in uh, Eric's uh, video, such as e5, for example, knight e4, d3, very bad move, and suddenly after bishop c5, white loses the game due to the fact that after d takes e4, bishop takes f2 follows, and the queen gets lost. So, well, I didn't know, of course, uh, such nuances. I did protect the pawn, just as simple as that, by developing my knight. Eric played bishop to c5. And here I realized that, yes, knight g4 is indeed a quite an unpleasant idea for black. They want to play knight g4 and then attack my pawn on f2. So if I play d3, black almost wins the game by playing knight g4. Maybe maybe not wins but definitely puts white in a very unpleasant position uh, that's why i played bishop e2 and in fact bishop e2 i think is the most like logical <laughs> trap for white to get into uh, you don't really want to play e5 that seems unlogical but you do want to develop your bishop to protect the pawn on g4 and somehow surprisingly is already quite a serious inaccuracy because well, first of all black can play queen d4 and capture the pawn on e4 and win back the sacrificed pawn but that's not exactly what they have in mind they want to continue the attack they want to play h5 again put some more support on the g4 square to prepare this knight to g4 and that's how my game continues i played h3 here I protected the pawn, the, the square with my pawn, queen d4, threatening to give a checkmate. I castled, 
And here comes the main uh, Stafford Gambit uh, trap, knight to g4. I think, again, I think it's very easy for white to get into this trap, and if you play like, uh, a few dozens of games with a Stafford Gambit, you will eventually manage to trap your opponent like this. Well, I realized that after h takes g4 during the game, h takes g4, this queen e5 idea is very unpleasant due to the spin of this pawn. So I'm not able to cover my king because of this queen takes g3. If I play, for example, bishop takes g4, queen e5 might follow, and then well, bishop takes h3, or rook takes h3, and queen g3 with checkmate. Uh, if I play for example, after h takes g4, g3, queen e5, and then this brilliant bishop takes f2, after king takes f2, rook h2, with a very strong attack, if I take with the rooks, then queen h5, and just too many threats, too many checks that black wants to give, and yeah, this pawn kind of makes uh, the whole defensive process impossible. Well, what to do? What to do after realizing that uh, somehow I got into uh, a trap, I did manage not to get checkmated immediately, which is already a huge thing. I captured the knight with the bishop, h takes g4, I played knight e2, the position is completely lost for white. Black can play queen f6, simply as, as simple as that, uh, then transfer his uh, queen to the h file. And uh, again, black's attack is just way too strong. In the game, Eric decided to capture only 4, which is also pretty good. Knight to g3, queen to h7, looked uh, very good here. But black played queen f4, and it gave me some time to finish development. Even though after d4 I sacrifice a pawn, but here the most important thing is to develop my pieces and to stop black's attack on the king's side and we have to keep in mind that black's king is still in the center it gives me more time i'm able to check this king to develop my pieces and we see that here i even i even captured the pawn on g4 since uh, black's queen is too far away from the h file to create uh, a threat and yes, the position is still quite unpleasant for um, white, but the game continued. The game continued, queen g5, trying to get the queen closer to the king. For example, if I ignore it, uh, there can be a very cute checkmate. Like a puzzle rush style checkmate, right? It's always nice to see such a checkmating patterns. Anyway, of course, I noticed this uh, idea, black's idea, that's why I played f3, I protected the pawn on g4, and uh, I opened up a road to my king to go to f2, even though the king on f2 is not ideally placed, but yes, yes, black's position is better, but again, the worst is uh, behind me. Uh, rook d1, rook e8, queen e4, and here I almost equalized, queen f6, queen d4, and here black blundered. He had to exchange the queens, and again, the endgame is about equal. After queen e7, the position is lost for black. I uh, grabbed the pawn on a7, and after bishop d5, I could have won the game with a very nice combination, c4, forcing the bishop to move away. And what is important is to see that every single square from where my king can be checked, is under control of my pieces. The knight on g3 is protecting the, the square on e2, the rook is guarding the e1 square, and my queen is guarding those two squares. So despite the fact that my king is somehow a very, feel quite uncomfortable on f2, but all my pieces are making sure that this king is not attacked. And c4 could have won the game in one move, because after bishop takes c4, queen a checkmate uh, can happen. In the game, I played knight e4 with the same idea, since uh, this bishop is overloaded, so it's protecting the d-file and cannot really move away. Uh, but okay, the game continued, and there were many ups and downs. I spoiled almost all my advantage, but at the end, at the end, I managed to win in a 
pretty close to equal uh, rook endgame but it's blitz after all it's blitz and it's very hard to protect positions with um, even a slight disadvantage that was that's how my stafford gambit story began so after the game after this game i did analyze uh, this uh, gambit and i realized that after knight c3 so we're getting back to the opening so knight f3 knight f6 take knight c6 take take knight c3 bishop c5 the strongest move for white is h3 protecting uh, the g4 square immediately and not developing my bishop to e2 just yet it can be later on developed even to g2 and queen f3 move is quite helpful in some lines so h3 is a very strong move here and i did play several games with this move later on my opponents played h5 eric rosen in 2021 he played b5 and lost uh, the game like this so i got a very good position out of the opening and managed to win this game in the other games that i played after h3 my opponent played h5 d3 and my plan is to play queen f3 bishop e3 for example if queen d4 happens then queen f3 bishop e3 and longside castle could be uh, the following moves if black plays bishop d4 then well white can develop his bishop to g2 g3 bishop g2 that gives white quite a big advantage and also i must briefly mention that knight takes c3 is not the only option and it's very hard to say what is the best option for white since they have quite a few very strong possibilities that will let them have almost a decisive advantage so this stafford gambit is a quite a bad gambit to tell you the truth alas yes you do set up uh, some dangerous traps for your opponent but if he reacts correctly you are gonna face the reality you're gonna end up in a lost position with uh, being a pawn or two pawns down but again whether you're ready to take the risk or not i i don't know it's your decision it's your call uh, let me show you what else white can do uh, in the stafford gambit knight c3 and then h3 is a good move order but also g3 is pretty strong and after bishop c5 in that case not bishop g5 as i played in the video with my daughter due to knight e4 and this beautiful checkmate that reminds uh, legal checkmate so much not not knight c3 of course because of knight g4 knight g4 is a very dangerous threat so here after d3 bishop e2 is a very good move h5 and here in some games i played h3 and i won two of them after queen d4 there are castling a uh, short side castle is possible already because knight g4 in one game my opponent played knight g4 but it's a different story here black doesn't really have time to play queen e5 with a checkmate in threat they do play queen e5 in the game in my game black played queen e5 but then king to g2 and bishop takes f2 is not is not winning anymore since i just capture the bishop and i go to e1 and i go to d2 and i have an extra rook no two extra pieces which should be good enough to win the game in my game i didn't uh, i didn't dare to take on f2 i played bishop f4 which is also pretty strong queen takes b2 knight d2 and that's how i won this game i ended up being a piece up so h3 here is a very good option as well because after queen d4 you can castle you have already opened this bishop and it's quite important apparently yes white is just in time to save uh, himself from this attack but also c3 is a very good move protecting this square on d4 and after knight to g4 preparing to play d4 if black just retreats his bishops then h3 
and developing your bishop to e3 to g5 would be very good well in this case to g5 to protect this pawn and to on e4 and to pin the knight if black tries to give us colors made queen h4 and g3 queen f6 bishop f3 covering this f5 and after bishop d7 yeah there is one more trap for white not to get into the easiest way probably is to play h3 and after castling yeah it's possible to take on g4 but maybe simply ignore this knight play knight d2 develop your pieces um, white already has uh, so much uh, beautiful center and extra material because after d takes c5 alongside castle but has to be careful since queen to e2 suddenly almost loses the game due to knight e5 this bishop is hanging and if knight d2 uh, then bishop h3 suddenly white's king is in trouble again well that's the story of this gambit yes there are many many traps uh, but as you could see there are ways to refute it for white you can either play knight c3 and h3 or d3 and then bishop e2 yes there are moves to watch out there are ideas for black to be prepared too but it's not that dangerous if you are well prepared and with that in mind i'm gonna finish this uh, video and i hope that if you face the stafford gambit you will be well prepared and you are not going to get into those Stafford Gambit traps. All the best to you and see you soon.